Birds may be attracted to a garden or porch by offerings of food. Just as a guest comes into your home and you may offer him some tea and vegan biscuits, offering some food is a lovely way to make friends with local birds. Please continue watching to find out more. Good day, marvelous viewers. I'm Elia, and I am a handsome South African greater kudu, even if I do say so myself. The animals and people of rhythmic South Africa love watching all of the vibrant colors in the sky as the sun rises here, and we wish that you too feel blessed and awe-inspired when you watch the sun rise in the morning. It is my absolute joy to present today's show in celebration of Be Kind to Animals Week. How to be a gracious host for the animals, part one of three. Be Kind to Animals Week has been observed in the first full week of May every year since 1973. Although it started in the US, this is a celebration of compassion that all of humanity can participate in. In honor of Be Kind to Animals Week, we start this three-part series of shows by exploring ways to make your home inviting and accommodating for wildlife of the air, specifically birds. Many human friends have a front yard and backyard or even a balcony which can serve as a small sanctuary for our feathered friends. As growing cities have led to expanding urban landscapes, creating a small refuge is something that many flying co-inhabitants truly appreciate. Birds may be attracted to a garden or porch by offerings of food. Just as a guest comes into your home and you may offer him some tea and vegan biscuits, offering some food is a lovely way to make friends with local birds. Watching birds bathe, drink, eat and frolic brings so much joy to many people, including children. One person who knows a thing or two about this is Professor Daryl Jones, an Australian bird feeding expert, who said the following about building kingship with the birds and how it can be so uplifting. It's a profoundly important thing for some people. It's a way of connecting with nature in a truly simple way. You put out a little bit of food, and these truly wild birds come to visit us in our own yards. It's fantastic. Wild animals come to us. And that's, for lots of people, a really important experience. It's a connection with nature, and it's so easy to do. That's the other thing. I'm always delighted when humans and animals make friends with each other. But it is important to remember that to be a gracious host involves feeding responsibly. The key is to research what type of food is beneficial for these winged friends so that you are helping to keep them healthy. When Professor Jones researched the food preferences of the local birds in his area, such as the beautiful rainbow lorikeets and parrots, he found that they simply love eating blueberries, raspberries, chopped apples and chopped frozen peas. So, this is what he serves them when they come to visit. He also gives commercial seed mix and advises that when buying this product, it's best to choose those offering a variety of seeds of different sizes, such as sunflower seeds and millet. For most birds, a round, flat dish, such as the kind usually found at the bottom of a pot plant, makes a great serving platter. And it's important to remember that the food you provide is intended to be a snack, so please don't feed too much. Think of it more as morning or afternoon tea that you are serving. We wild animals still need to rely on nature, even though we do enjoy mingling with humans a little bit and enjoying a tasty snack. In other areas of the world, birds enjoy eating different foods. Particularly in cold climates, offering some type of food can help provide nourishment during cold days and nights. Some birds have a very fast metabolism, so it's important for them to eat enough calories. Birds such as woodpeckers, chickadees, yellow rumpled warbles, wrens and more love eating a certain specialty, vegan suet. Conventional suet is sadly made from animals and thus to be avoided. But animal loving people such as yourself have developed vegan suet recipes and products that are just glorious and these can be found online. 
vegan suet may be made from organic, non-genetically modified ingredients such as millet, peanut butter and raisins. Making some vegan suet would be fun, don't you think? All this talk about food is making me hungry. Cheerful viewers, I can see some vines that look simply delicious. I'm going to pause to have a little snack. We'll return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our show in celebration of Be Kind to Animals Week. How to be a gracious host for the animals. Part 1 of 3 on Supreme Master Television. So far, we've spoken about being a host for birds in general. But there is one bird that we haven't spoken about yet. They have mesmerizing beauty, shimmering colors and move with sleek precision. Can you guess which bird I'm talking about? The hummingbird. Humans and animals alike admire these elegant beings and many humans take delight in watching and feeding them. Hummingbirds are attracted to gardens that have trumpet shaped or tubular flowers in vibrant colors such as red, orange, blue and yellow and blossoms that contain a lot of nectar. Festive and feast worthy flowers for the hummingbird include hyssop or hummingbird mint, honeysuckle, bottle brush, fuchsia, yellow trumpet bush and more. Just remember that if you are planting flowers that attract hummingbirds, please be sure that the flowers are safe for any animal companions that may live in your home, such as cats and dogs. Many people take delight in feeding hummingbirds via purpose-built feeders. There are various hummingbird feeders to choose from, and one can easily make their own feeder at home too. One of the important things to know is what to feed these shimmering beauties. The United States-based Hummingbird Society gives a recipe calling for 200 grams, one cup of white cane sugar, and 710 or 950 milliliters, three or four cups, of spring water. Simply dissolve the sugar in the water by safely heating it on the stove and serve once it is cool. Please don't add any red food coloring. It can be dangerous for hummingbirds to consume. The unused mixture can be stored in the fridge for up to seven days. Once the mixture has been served to the birds, it's important to change it frequently so that it's fresh and clean. Checking on the feeder every few days is advised, especially in warm weather. It's important to note that the sugar used needs to be white cane sugar. Beet sugar is also acceptable, but white cane sugar is best. Furthermore, please don't feed these sweet birds any other type of sugar. Avoid any turbinado, raw, brown or organic sugar. This is crucial. The reason for not using these products is that iron is toxic to the hummingbirds. So if the sugar isn't processed to a pure white color and trace amounts of iron are present, this can make the hummingbirds extremely sick. Also, besides not being vegan, be sure to skip honey. When water is added, bacteria and fungus will grow in it. So now we've learned great insights for supplying delicious snacks to our winged friends. As any great host knows, the other part of serving food to friends at gatherings is the cleanup. Cleaning bird feeders is essential for bird health, so please pay close attention to how to do it best. The feeders for the sweet hummingbirds can be disassembled for washing. This is very important to do so that you may remove any dirt and bacteria. The Hummingbird Society recommends using mild detergent to clean them. Soaking the feeder in a mixture of unscented dish soap and hot water will help to loosen any nectar residue and, of course, the next step is to give it a gentle scrub. Vinegar may also be used as a natural cleaner. And be sure to rinse everything thoroughly with water after cleaning. Some feeders can be placed into the dishwasher though be sure to rinse it afterwards to get rid of any soap residue that may remain. Please also remember to frequently clean all bird feeders such as vegan suet holders, dishes or plates. Unscented dishwashing liquid and warm water as well as vinegar can be used for this. Professor Daryl Jones uses a plastic feeding dish with small holes drilled into it. He then uses a bristled brush to wipe the tray down after birds have eaten and gives it a quick wipe with vinegar. 
He recommends doing this every day to avoid spreading any avian diseases. Welcome to In Celebration of Be Kind to Animals Week. How to be a gracious host for the animals. Part 2 of 3. Be Kind to Animals Week has been observed in the first full week of May every year since 1973. Although it started in the US, this is a celebration of compassion that all of humanity can participate in. In today's show, we'll explore things that can be done to make backyard pools safer for the wildlife that may come to visit and also for the animals already living there. We Greater Kudu know what it's like to be thirsty because we really look forward to drinking water in the dry season. Through the grapevine, we've learned that different animals might come into yards looking for some water to drink or even to splash and play about in. So here are some tips to help them if they visit your swimming pool. To help prevent animals from falling into the pool in the first place, it's a great idea to keep any surrounding trees neatly trimmed back so that they don't hang over the water itself. The reason for this is that animals who play, jump and scamper around the tree branches may fall off them by accident. Having trees well away from the pool will help keep animals such as squirrels, raccoons, birds and opossums from falling into the water. Plus, it will also help to keep the pool cleaner without tree leaves falling in. It's also a good idea to have a fence around a pool so that only human and furry family members can have supervised time in the water. Unfortunately, family members have also had to be rescued from backyard pools. We animals are very active during the day, especially when we live out in Mother Nature. We may travel long distances. Thus, we're always on the lookout for food. So, it's best to keep the area around the swimming pool nice and clean, without any leftover food, and definitely no food wrappers to tempt us. Animals such as deer, raccoons, dogs, cats, skunks, chipmunks and mice may fall into the water while they are preoccupied with food morsels and smells that are surrounding the pool. If any garbage bins are left beside the pool, it's also best that they have a snap lock cover that can't be easily opened if they tip over. I also invite you to leave drinking water out for animal visitors. You might wonder how this could help, but think about it. We animals need fresh, clean water to drink, just like you. By putting clean water into shallow dishes, bird baths, or dog or cat water bowls, animals then have a safe and shallow water source rather than trying to drink from the pool itself. It's also not ideal for us to be drinking strongly chlorinated pool water, so giving us another means to quench our thirst is very welcome and appreciated. If you live in a hot climate where overheated animals might come looking for water to drink, then covering the pool and providing alternative water stations kindly provides a safe source of drinking water for the sun-kissed animals. If animals do fall into the water, there are some nifty things that can help to save their lives. When I learned about these devices, I was so excited for my animal kin all over the world because these do indeed save lives. I thank the kind humans who invented these mechanisms to prevent poor animals from drowning. One product is called Critter Clear and another one is called Frog Log. These devices sit at the edge of the pool and provide a mesh climber that animals can use to escape from the water. A number of frog log or critter clear units can be positioned around the pool for maximum wildlife safety. Frogs, toads, mice, opossums, bats, birds and other animals might be very grateful for this. Spectacular viewers, I am going to sip on some cool water that I have access to thanks to the irrigation system that local humans have created. We will return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Be vegan. Make peace. <laughs> Welcome back to our show in celebration of Be Kind to Animals Week. How to be a gracious host for the animals. Part 2 of 3. 
on Supreme Master Television. If there is anything that I've learned about humans, it's that they can be very creative and resourceful. When coupled with their kindness, we animals are really touched by what humans create to help us. Now here are some more ideas on keeping your animal friends safe around swimming pools. It's a great idea to leave some floating items on the water surface so that animals can clamber onto them when in need. This way, they can conserve their energy until a helpful human comes and helps them out of the water. Floating items such as pool noodles, a pool hose, or a couple of clean plastic bottles partially filled with water could be purposefully left in the water. Try not to make the item too high off the water surface so that the animals can easily grab onto them, even when they are tired from trying to stay afloat. Using something with some sort of texture also helps the animal to grip onto it better. Okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get you. Okay, come here. Come here. Oh. You're okay. So far, we've looked at making swimming pools safer for animals. But did you know that pools can be built and converted into veritable backyard havens for wildlife? You may be interested to know that there are ways to build pools and convert existing swimming pools into natural swimming pools that don't use chemicals such as chlorine. These can be made on a small scale to create wildlife ponds that can provide a shallower water source for wild animals. To look at, natural pools or recreation ponds are reminiscent of naturally occurring bodies of water. The way that the water is cleaned involves creating biozones where reeds and aquatic plants are strategically placed. These help to clean the water. The larger zone is usually free of plants for the purpose of swimming. Some natural pools use a biofilter to clean the water. This water is safer for animals who may find their way to the pool, such as salamanders and frogs that have semi-porous skin. For them, being in chlorinated water for lengthy periods of time is quite harmful. It's also safer for animals that do happen to drink the water. And for other small animals who fall in, the plant zones may provide them with enough grip to climb out on their own. Humans have happily reported that wildlife have found their way to these chemical-free pools to drink, bathe and bask. This includes birds, koalas, dragonflies and ducks. And to make them safer still, having purposeful exits for the animals would be great. Another feature of some natural pools is that they have a gentle incline out of the water with a pebbly bottom that may also help animals to leave the water more easily. An extra ramp here could also be helpful. So. You might be wondering, what can be done if an animal is found in the water? For small animals, such as mice, birds and frogs, you can help them by gently scooping them out of the pool with a pool skimmer. If a pool skimmer isn't available, then something else may be used, such as a mop or a broom. As we've learned so far, you might unexpectedly find a larger animal in the water. If this happens, look around to see what is available to help them out. And keep in mind that the animal is probably in distress, so be a little cautious to avoid possibly being bitten or otherwise getting hurt. Items that might be used to help larger animals out of the water can include partially deflated float toys and beds. A pool chair might allow an animal to climb on board and then exit the pool. If the animal isn't recovering, then please phone your local wildlife group or you can take the animal to a vet if practical. We are excited to welcome you to today's show in celebration of Be Kind to Animals Week. How to be a gracious host for the animals, part three of three. Be Kind to Animals Week has been observed in the first full week of May every year since 1973. Although it started in the US, this is a celebration of compassion that all of humanity can participate in. In parts 1 and 2, we explored different ways to be hospitable to wild animals who come to visit, just like a host who may serve afternoon tea to guests. 
we covered methods to make the wonderful animals feel welcome, nurtured, and satiated. This episode will explore this further while adding another very important layer to consider. When wanting to nurture and attract wildlife to your garden, balcony, or patio, it's important to remember that animals can sense the energetic feeling of the home and that many animals will be attracted to more harmonious, uplifting, and kind vibrations that they feel being emitted. And what better way to uplift your energy than to adopt a vegan diet? I can tell you from an animal's perspective that we can certainly tell whether humans are vegan or not. And we do celebrate all of the vegan people in the world. Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken about positive energy and why it's so important. That is what causes the happiness or the sorrow of our life, the energies, the negative energy or the positive energy. Now the vegan diet is benevolent, so it will bring you happy energy. And that in turn will breed more happiness, will attract more happiness. And when you're happy, everything will be better. So, it's easy to understand why being vegan creates positive energy that may attract animals. Perhaps letting them know that your yard or balcony might be a safe space for them. We animals also like to support and assist humans with their benevolent and noble actions. So, one way to attract us energetically is to do positive and uplifting things. Supreme Master Ching Hai encourages people to be selfless, which helps to create positivity. This is exactly what happened to Billy Dean, a telepathic animal communicator, when she was writing the speech that she was going to deliver at the April 2011 launch of Supreme Master Ching Hai's poetry collection, The Love of Centuries. And when I was writing these words, bluebirds and hummingbirds came into my field and they wanted to thank Supreme Master Ching Hai for her tireless work in creating change and awareness for animal kind. They say this is so important and that truly a new light is shining on earth now. And this unconditional love and peace will lead us all to a true heaven on earth. We animals from all around the globe are also deeply aware of the changes that are occurring in nature. They affect us a lot, from the birds that fly in the suburbs to the orangutans surrounded by deforestation. It affects the amount and quality of food that we have to eat, how clean the water is for the amphibious animals, whether drinking water is available, and how we cope with changing weather and natural disasters. So, we do truly appreciate when humans wholeheartedly work to save this world for us and for everyone who calls this planet home. We can sense their sincerity and compassion and this energy of trying with such love to rescue this world for us. We have even been sharing this message with many animal communicators, as Amelia Kincaid can attest to. All the animals are concerned about their environment and what human beings are doing to them. And everywhere I go in the world, whether it's in Thailand, I'm working with tigers and elephants, or in South Africa, I'm working with lions, with baboons, penguins, sharks, uh, cheetah. All of the endangered species are concerned about the humans. They're waiting for us to get it together. These words are true indeed. So, I hope that you can understand why we animals tend to gravitate towards people and homes that feel more loving, peaceful and safe with positive vegan energy and uplifting ideals. This is all being energetically emitted by household members and of course the positive energy is also broadcast by Supreme Master Television. At any luncheon or afternoon tea, a gracious host makes polite conversation with their guests. And in a similar fashion, being a gracious host for animals that visit your home, garden or balcony involves understanding that animals may come with special messages just for you. Supreme Master Ching Hai has described this on many occasions. When I first came to the new land, they have a place for me uh, and uh, these are negative 
ghosts had been there before because there was nobody living there for 10 something years. And so they think we invaded their territory, so they make trouble. So the birds came. I never saw so many birds who came at one time like that and sing so loud, so beautiful. They told me they were doing some secret. I can't tell you, but they were secretly doing some formula to protect me from these uh, demons. And the squirrel came and said, they wish me well, you know. I wish me freedom, happiness, safety, and peace, yes. And the monkeys also, I asked them, why is that you are so kind? Every time you see me, you say, well wish. Yes, Master. They say, ooh, ooh, that means well wish, yeah, well wishing. Yeah. Yes, Master. Say, I wish you well in our language, but their language is shorter. They don't talk a lot, except on the inside, understand? Yes, Master. The vocabulary physically is short, but inside they relate information in perfect English. <laughs> their English is better than mine. <laughs> Considering that they talk so quickly and not having to think or write down or anything. I say, I asked the monkey, why are you so good, so kind? Every time you see me, you just uh, bow the head and say, wish you well, why is that? And they told me, because you are the worthy one. I say, wow. who told you that? They say, we know. <laughs> oh, all the animals know, all the animals know. Oh, we shameful, you know, if we do things wrong, not only heavens know, but the animals, they know everything. Yes, so we have to be careful what we're doing. It's a wonderful habit to remember that animal and insect visitors, ranging from the tiniest spider to a big stray dog, or a small grasshopper to a large deer, can visit with messages for you. We animals know that you humans may not hear the message that we bring, but having an open heart and greeting us with appreciation can act as a loving bridge that may help you to connect with us more deeply and perhaps even aid you to begin to receive some of the tidings that we bring. We will always strive to support those peaceful hearted ones among you. And that includes when you are a guest in our homes too. Humans enjoy visiting gardens, lakes, oceans, national parks and other natural spaces and I wonder have you ever thought about how to be a gracious guest in these circumstances? We are often living so much closer together now, especially in urban areas. Consider times when you may have visited a park, canal, river or pond. You may have had a family picnic or outing and wanted to share some food with the local duck residents. Food such as corn, lettuce, oats, frozen peas and grapes are healthier alternatives to bread. Ducks tend to be drawn towards foods that float on the surface. It's also a good idea to remember that feeding ducks should be done sparingly. The food should be thought of as a snack, not the main meal. When feeding animals in your local area, please be sure to research first to find out what foods are healthiest for them to eat and remember to feed them responsibly. Our waterways are home to much local wildlife, including water birds, fish, frogs, lizards and more. So it's important to remember to not put any rubbish, chemicals, medications or leftover food into the drains at home as these could end up polluting the water and even affecting local creeks, rivers, canals and estuaries. Brilliant viewers, it has been such a delight to present this three-part series in celebration of Be Kind to Animals Week how to be a gracious host for the animals, and to have you with us. May your connection to and reverence for nature and the amazing animals light up your life each day, bringing joy, inspiration, and phenomenal beauty. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash aw. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com baroblique schedule et suprememastertv.com baroblique aw. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada aw. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Acesse suprememastertv.com barra schedule y suprememastertv.com barra w. Be veg, go green to save the planet.